brace for nightly water lockoffs. What the Water Commission is telling corporate era residents as drought conditions worsen. Good evening and welcome to Primetime News on air and online at onespotmedia.com. I'm Vashon Brown. Also this evening, a need for balance. Press Association weighs in on debate about whether lawyers should speak to the media during court cases and get help why the police high command says cops should use support systems. There's also sports, sports commentary and weather in this newscast, so stay tuned. The news in detail right after this break. Brace for nightly water lockoffs. That's the warning this evening to residents in sections of the corporate area as the dry conditions worsen in some sections of the island. The forecast for the upcoming months is dismal for some parishes, with the Met Service predicting that the dry conditions could become more severe. We have more in this report. The drought conditions have been particularly bad in parishes like St. Elizabeth, St. Mary and Portland. The devastating effects of the prolonged dry spell in full display all across the parish of St. Elizabeth. Empty water tanks, withered crops and thirsty livestock. Little rain accompanied by heat waves are things people living in the parish are familiar with, particularly farmers. As you see it, the, the drought really has rough air right now. I am hoping that rain will come soon. No. The National Water Commission says the water problem is hitting the corporate area. The commission is now warning people to brace for nightly water lockoffs in some sections of Kingston and St. Andrew. NWC Corporate Public Relations Manager Charles Buchanan says reduced intake due to the worsening dry spell has resulted in a major drop in the storage level at the Hermitage Dam, which serves a large part of the corporate area. We have seen reduced inflows that have caused the storage level to fall now to well as uh, arrangements to remove some communities that would normally be served by that Hermitage Constant Spring Water Supply System uh, to place them on other systems so that they are receiving water from other systems that are not presently being impacted by the drought conditions. Manor Park, Constant Spring Gardens, communities of Constant Spring Road, Red Hills Road, Mannings Hill Road are being affected by the water restrictions. The Press Association of Jamaica, PAJ, has weighed in on the raging debate about whether lawyers should speak to the media while cases are still before the courts. The General Legal Counsel and former President of the Court of Appeals, Seymour Panton, last week criticized the attorneys who speak with media while cases are still in progress. But the PAJ President, Dion Jackson Miller, who is also an attorney, insists there needs to be a balance. TVJ's Giovanni Dennis has more. Untenable in this day and age, the argument that lawyers should not give media interviews during court cases, that for who speak with media while cases are still in progress. But the PAJ president, Dion Jackson Miller, who is also an attorney, insists there needs to be a balance. TVJ's Giovanni Dennis has more. Untenable in this day and age, the argument that lawyers should not give media interviews during court cases, that from the Press Association of Jamaica. A lot of lawyers now are going to be running for cover. They're going to be afraid to talk to the press because they're going to be afraid that the GLC is going to come down hard on them. Did you make a bail application in court today? Oh, I can't say I'm not supposed to talk to the press. Okay, I'm exaggerating to make a point. But really and truly, in 2018, people want more openness and more transparency, not just in relation to politicians and governance, but also in relation to the justice system. The PAJ president responding to the statement from the General Legal Council, GLC. On Wednesday, the GLC said it views with concern the practice of attorneys making statements to the press concerning pending judicial proceedings. Former President of the Court of Appeal, Seymour Panton, says it is an improper practice that should be halted. But the PAJ President argues that the situation creates a dilemma both in and outside the courtroom that has to be fairly addressed. 
On the one hand, you have the right of the accused person to a fair trial, and that's something we can't forget and we don't forget. On the other hand, though, you have the rights of the persons involved to freedom of expression, and you also have the right of the public to seek information and to receive information. She argues that information in the public about court proceedings will help improve public understanding of and confidence in the justice system. There is an overarching public good that is involved here. The public needs to have confidence in the administration of justice. You can't have confidence in a system if you don't understand it. And a critical aspect of people understanding the justice system is actually lawyers talking to the press and through them to the public and helping people to understand what is happening in the courtrooms. Queen's Counsel Valerie Nita Robertson, who has been doing media interviews since the Vibes Cartel murder appeal had this to say in response last week. They have listened to our arguments and it's the same arguments I'm producing to you. Nothing different, nothing added and I'm not giving a view of what I think they should find. I have put my position before them and if they agree with me then they will rule in my favor. So in these circumstances I really don't see where any influence or any breach of professional ethics would, would occur. Giovanni Dennis, TVJ News. President of the People's National Party PNP, Dr. Peter Phillips, is signaling that the opposition could soon withdraw support for the state of emergency in St. James. Dr. Phillips questioned whether the money being spent could be better used to bring about a more lasting solution to crime. Here is TVJ's Dashen Hendricks. Are we getting the best value for the country's anti-crime effort? Dr. Peter Phillips raising concerns at his party's National Executive Council meeting on Sunday at the University of the West Indies, questioning if the country is getting value for money with the St. James State of Emergency. He points out that close to $250 million has been spent so far on the police alone for the security measure in the parish and said the money could be deployed to longer term measures. You could get better results by preparing the police force to be effective at intelligence-led policing. What about those who say that the money spent to save lives is, uh, is worth it? No, uh, that's why we have supported the state of emergency so far. But that doesn't prevent us from thinking through approaches to the problems. Close to 3,000 people have been detained so far. 150 have been charged, 20 of them gang members. For Dr. Phillips, the figure for gang members is low, given that St. James has a gang problem, which forced the government in January to declare the initial state of emergency. The PNP has supported every extension since, but Dr. Phillips is indicating it won't be forever. And it will end, but not in a for is for the government to tell us when we will reach the point when they won't have in the meantime dr phillips continues to press the prime minister to fire dr andrew wheatley for what he is now calling the mother of all scandals involving petrojam he said petrojam aside the jlp administration has had a slew of scandals in the last two and a half years which are bleeding the public's confidence in the government at a time when the average jamaican faces rising cost of living when they hear news that hundreds of millions of dollars have gone missing and that friends of ministers are placed in high position at salaries never before seen this is a hard and bitter pill for the average jamaican to solve it is indeed a bitter pill from a prime minister who promised bitter medicine. Why the prime minister continues to keep Dr. Andrew Wheatley in the cabinet, given the issues of governance, nepotism and corruption, were raised in more than one entity for which he had oversight. Then we he see made this comparison. Similarities with the crisis that emerged in 2010 and 2011, because once again, it seems that the JLP government is prepared to sacrifice everything to protect one person. 
And as the PNP continues to raise concerns about the Petrojam scandal, one government senator is this evening insisting that the PNP should remember that it has a list of scandals of its own. Matthew Samuda made the comment. Very vocal about the issues plaguing the oil refinery Petrojam. In fact, the PNP president, Dr. Peter Phillips, has called the Petrojam matter the mother of all scandals. But government senator Matthew Samuda says the PNP has a long list of scandals of its own. You have to remember as far back as 1989, the Rollins land deal. You have to remember the zinc fence scandal, the zinc scandal. We must remember the furniture scandal, the shell waiver scandal, the motor vehicle importation scandal of 1992, the foreign exchange scandal of 1993, the land distribution scandal at Holland in 1994. He continued. Cuban light bulb scandal of 2007. And let us not forget traffic around the same year. But you know what, Labour Rights? We often don't tell our children and the people that are guiding in front of the radio and the news when it's coming over that the biggest scandal of it all was how the Jamaican people were treated under the FinSAC disaster. We have a new to ensure our people never forget. He was addressing JLP supporters at the Mountain View Primary School in St. Andrew on Sunday. In the meantime, Finance Minister Dr. Nigel Clark has been touting the government's performance on the economy. Jobs, unemployment is down, poverty is down, interest rates down, investment is up, capex is up, capital, capital expenditure by the private sector is up, capital expenditure by the government is up, spending on social protection and spending on protecting the vulnerable is up by 50%. Another era where the government says it's doing a good job is education. Last year we spent over $120 million fixing up canteens across the entire country. Because for the first time, we are hiring cooks for those canteens so that people who are on top don't have to pay no $50 or no money to contribute to paying the workers. Because when we say it's free, it must be free indeed. Delegates of the Police Federation have rejected the government's latest wage offer. The Federation represents rank-and-file members of the Jamaica Constabulary Force, JCF. The delegates rejected the proposed four-year wage offer during a meeting with members of the Central Executive of the Police Federation on Friday. Chairperson of the Federation, Corporal Arlene McBean, spoke with our news centre. The Police Federation presented the proposal from the government of Jamaica. We explain to them what it means for their salary. They have taken a unanimous decision that they will not accept the minuscule offer on salaries from the government or will they accept a four-year contract. The Federation has not disclosed the latest wage offer, which is still under negotiation, but said it will be writing to the Finance Ministry for another meeting to continue negotiations, because some constables are especially affected. The constable at the midpoint per day would be getting from this increase $122 a day, and that cannot be a form or part of a livable wage if they are to survive in this economical situation. The Police High Command is urging its members to make use of the three main support systems established to cater to their overall well-being. It says these include the Volunteer Pastors Program, the Chaplaincy Unit and the Medical Services Branch. This comes after it was revealed that Senior Superintendent Dermot Lawrence had taken his own life. The High Command says it is mindful of the intense stress of the job and the impact it can have on the personal lives and performance of members. It added that SSP Lawrence's work Work ethic and discipline were a blueprint of excellence in policing. He served the force for 37 years. The JCF Chaplaincy Unit, the Community Safety and Security Branch, and the Medical Services Branch have been directed to provide support to the family and colleagues with whom he worked. The St. Catherine North Police are trying to determine a motive for this morning's execution-style killing of two men in Guanabo Vale, St. Catherine. Head of the division, Superintendent Bu Rigaby, who visited the crime scene, says his detectives are trying to determine what led to the killing of the men who remain unidentified. It's reported that about 7.15, residents saw the bodies of the men on Barry Road and called the police. The bodies have what appeared to be gunshot wounds to the heads. Both are believed to have been mid-twenties. 
A man was shot and killed by a policeman after he reportedly robbed passengers on a Jamaica Urban Transit Company, JUTC bus, yesterday. The incident happened about 8.45 in the evening along East Queen Street in downtown Kingston. It's reported that a man held up the driver and passengers on the number 98 JUTC bus. A tussle ensued between the driver and the robber prompting an off-duty policeman to intervene. The cop drew his firearm and shot him. The injured man was taken to the Kingston Public Hospital, where he was pronounced dead. His identity has not yet been released. Now the Independent Commission of Investigations, Indicom, is probing the matter. A man is dead and his sister-in-law in police custody following a dispute in 19 miles Maple and Clarendon yesterday. The deceased has been identified as 35-year-old Mark Dane Thompson of 10 Trenton Crescent in the parish. Arendt drove off. He later crashed along the road. Mr. Thompson was taken to the hospital where he was pronounced dead. The woman is in police custody. And that's it for the local segment. Still ahead in primetime news, the Business Review and International Stories. We invite you to stay with us. Accept debit and credit card. Welcome back. Chairman of the Linkages Council, Adam Stewart, is calling for Corporate Jamaica to help small businesses to grow. Mr. This review brought to you by Christmas in July at made the call as he pushed to get more local manufactured products in hotels. TVJ's Dashan Hendricks tells us more in this week's edition of the Business Review. Give them a chance. Hold their hand. A passionate plea from the chairman of the Linkages Council, Adam Stewart. The appeal going out to corporate Jamaica. Mr. Stewart telling his colleagues to give young entrepreneurs a chance, some displaying their wares at the annual Christmas in July event at the Jamaica Pegasus Hotel late last week. They're being handheld by the Tourism uh, Linkages Network and by the JBDC. But we need to make sure and help them that we don't take away their enthusiasm but in fact that we inspire them to keep going as they learn their lessons and don't give up on them. Pointing out many companies given the chance to grow have grown, he introduced Cydia Brown, a director of Sidsil Customs Craft. Sidsil Customs Craft is a company that make, not, make hats, handbags, iPod case, wedding souvenirs, just in the, it's like it's custom craft, so anything that we can use from the natural fiber to make, once you come to us, we'll never say no. We'll at least try to make it. So we use that fiber and make a phone case, anything that you can imagine. We'll Ms. Brown has been participating in Christmas in July for the past three years. The challenge for the company at the beginning was to produce corporate gifts, which it did, starting with iPad cases and getting her first big order of the items from the U.S. Embassy. So I'm very pleased, I'm very grateful for this event. It has caused our company to grow, to expand. There are a lot of persons, even from overseas, that have been calling us. They have seen us from the show three years ago, and they're still interested in buying from us. It's a story to draw the attention of the Industry, Commerce and Agriculture Minister, Audley Shaw. He said the stories like hers mean Jamaica can no longer give lip service to linkages in the economy. Coming to this latest Christmas in July initiative, Mr. Shaw said he was keen to know how many hotels were there to interact with local manufacturers and was disappointed there weren't many. He has since devised a plan to let hotels know what manufactured items are available from Jamaican producers. And I want a list of everything displayed. And I want a cover letter drafted for my signature. And it is going to be sent to every hotel in Jamaica. What happened here today? Manufacturers endorsing the move also point to other issues, chiefly financing for the sector. It is time, Minister, that we receive the 4% money afforded to other industries. Mr. Shaw, who has long been an advocate for low interest rates, reiterated that he is actively pursuing that matter. He said he met with the finance minister last week to discuss the very issue, and a submission has been made to cabinet as he seeks to go after $15 billion held in dormant accounts to make available to manufacturers at low single digits. He praised the efforts to link hotels, manufacturers and farmers in Jamaica, but said the idea must be taken further. I'm going on a crusade to have the hotels from near and far, including the Spanish hotel chains, yes, 
Because I want to say to them, I know of your vertical integration model. Yes, I know about that. But I want to say, I want to marry our exotics, our clear potential, and put them into your vertical integration model. For him, it's time to get aggressive and creative. For the Business Review, I am Dashan Hendricks. Time now for news overseas. A taxi bus full of taxi drivers in South Africa was sprayed with bullets Saturday night with gunmen killing at least 11 people who were heading back from a colleague's funeral. The 11 victims were among 17 people returning to Johannesburg from the funeral. It's reported that several gunmen jumped onto the road from the bushes and opened fire on the vehicle. Four other persons were critically wounded. The motive is unclear, although rivalry between groups running many bus taxi routes in South Africa has led to violence in the past. Minibus taxis are the most popular form of transportation among South Africa's population of 55 million. And the primetime package continues with sports right after this break.